there's such a fine line making money and losing money in, in the market. We want to teach you the concepts. You have to be okay with the type of trader that you are. We want to teach you the processes. This is what really gives the meat and potatoes to it. We're going to teach you how to. The bottom line is you want to make money trading. I can promise you that I can make you a better trader. Join T3 Live at the Boca Raton Hotel and Resort April 26th and 27th for an exclusive trading education event. Sign up now. Good afternoon, Scott Rella, T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. So today, finally, it felt like all the pressure out there added up and you had your first engulfing down day in the S&P. I know for the past week, week and a half, and there hasn't been, we haven't been saying, oh, there's a top, it's a top. We've been just saying, you know what? There's been mixed signals. There's been things to short, things to buy. Some traders are scratching their heads because it's hard to understand this action, where the leadership's coming from, where the strength is coming from that some things are starting to break down, but the S&P really doesn't care. Um, but overall, you know, today, finally, the S&P, the S&P, what's a, the, the S&P, nice, right, guys? <laughs> you can tell what kind of long day it was. So the S&P finally <laughs> went down and had an engulfing day. Uh, the type of day that we saw happen in the Russell, in the home builders, and in the transports on Monday, or close to it which gave us a little bit uh, you know, more, or gave us more signals to perhaps you know, get a little neutral, lean, maybe short, be on the lookout for some shorts. And as you saw on the virtual trading floor, I went from, I think, in November um, till now, having on average eight, nine positions long, peaking out at 15 longs to today. You know, I had like three longs on. And as we broke the eight day, I was talking on the radio and I'm like, now I'm net short and my overlay is on, which I tried yesterday and it hurt a little bit. It wasn't ready. It felt like yesterday was going to happen, but today it happened. So I sidestepped holding my nose and going underwater with portfolio approach. And, but instead it said, you know what? I'm going to look at the signs. They've been adding up. I'm going to be a little more flexible, maybe miss a few things and see if we get some kind of move to the downside. But with that said, now is very important on what trend do you follow? Do you follow the active accelerated trend, which we've broke like or, or we broke, you know, two or two or three times in the past, you know, six months, we've broken that accelerated that upper trend line and then we held the intermediate trend line. And then the gradual trend line, you know, hasn't even come into play for a while. So it all depends on, you know, where you want to live, what type of trends you follow, what your risk tolerance is and, and you know, what your commitment level to being in front of the keyboard is every day. So if you look at the chart of the S&P now, let me you know, show you what I'm talking about. So here's your low in November. Okay, a nice little red dog reversal after the previous correction that we saw that, that wound up cutting below the 50 day here, giving you five, 6% that if you would have sold here, you got out of the way. And then from here, we've had this nice gradual trend, very gradual, you know, like lining up, never even testing it. Within that move, okay, you also had an intermediate trend, something a little bit, uh, you know, more uh, pent up, uh, not as, you know, the pull-ins were, were a little less, uh, movement was faster, and you see here. And then you have the very active trend, which if you look from when we started the year, you know, is when we broke above this 1474, digested and went. So now look what took place right here, guys. This was when the Italian elections took place. This is when you had your first engulfing bar, which, is, which, which was a spot that I know we talked about taking some risk off. What did it lead to? It led to a two-day down move, bounced up, then had a potent move to the downside before reversing. Okay, the high here was, you know, 1530. The low here was 1485. You know, that's 45 handles of big time correction. Woohoo! Wasn't that big of a deal. If you sold here, okay, said, wow, I'm out of the way. This, this is over. Market's correcting. I'm out of the way. And you didn't get back in here or you didn't get back in when it held higher, okay, then how'd you feel when it started going again? So anyway, you had a little minor accelerated uptrend right here. If you guys remember, this was during, you know, the, the last move above 1530. Then all of a sudden the Cyprus news hit. Remember that Cyprus news with the 40% haircuts? That's what took place into the 21 day. And this one was a, a very shallow pull-in, right? 1563 to as low as 1538. You know, what was that? That was only like 20 handles, half of what took place here. So with that said, 
you know, last week we broke out above this resistance, which we talked about. Remember, we talked, you know, on the Twitter sphere, we talked about 15, uh, 58 to 1562. Can we hold this high level area? Can we continue to hold this trend line? And today we broke below it. So when we broke below, this just say 1562. I know for me, you saw some positions disappear. I talked about on the radio, you know, adding to some of my shorts. And look what took place. We had a move to the 21 day into some bigger support. Okay, kind of lining up with this trend line, not exactly. So the question is, what now? You know, do we pull back to 1538, which would be very shallow, that would make the bears very upset. Or do we, you know, come in down to perhaps this trend line, which is right around the 50 day. Okay, so what's gonna happen is, okay, if you, if you watch the media, you tune into the TV, you're gonna have the bears come out. They're gonna say, this is it. Armageddon, 20% off the highs. Here we go, boys. You're going to have some other people come on and say, you know what, it's going to be 10% correction. Just chill out, buy the dip, look for what's strong. Then you have some people say, nah, only want the 3% correction. And then you might have some people come out and say, today was it, I'm a buyer. First down on the day on the red, I I'm getting in there. Okay, what I do is my rule is, you know, I don't typically buy things on the first potent down day because sometimes it leads to more down days. So I'm a little bit more prudent, maybe a little conservative. And if we go up higher, maybe I cry a little bit saying, oh, I could have bought that. But that's my rule. And that rule would have saved me some money on Monday when you had that potent down day in the Russell, potent down day in the transports, even in the home builders. I saw people saying, I'm buying that dip. I'm like, why are you going to buy a dip in those sectors where it's a first potent down day after a huge move? Be a little prudent. So you look at the Russell. We talked about this in the morning call. You go here. This was that first potent down day. So on this day, okay, when it just broke the eight, it just broke the 21 day, your potent down day into a trend line, not the smartest thing to just blindly buy, considering I know it held here and I know it didn't get there over here, but just to me, it just didn't make sense. And then the last two days, you had actually uh, a little bit of opportunities to short it. Okay, here was yesterday's gap open, closing the lows, and here today's follow through into the 50 day. So, you know, my rule is on, you know, the third red day, you definitely cover at some point. You know, I, I talked about it a little early. If you covered early, who cares? At least you didn't get caught in and made some money. So at this point, what do we know? We know that this level was broken, this level was broken, and now you have some support in the Russell. You know, the 200 days is a lot lower, and we have a little bit of a pivot. So tomorrow we'll see how we dance around this, okay, which the level is 90.92. But just on the first, the rule is here though, on the first potent day, you just don't buy that because you never know what it leads to. That's the day you clean up on. That's the day that says, uh-oh, maybe something changed. Kind of like what took place here. If you remember what took place here, this was your first potent down day. It led to another, and then, you know, it went sideways, regrouped, and made new highs. So now we'll see what happens here. Do we go sideways, regroup, hold higher, and then go again? We shall see. That's why I'm saying, don't just say, oh, we're getting to the 200 day, we're coming here. You know what? We'll watch today's pivot tomorrow and we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, same thing took place in, the show you the transports. They both moved together and they were both were prior leaders. Look here at the chart. You will see in the transports that again, look at this potent day. Let's take these two days out of the picture. Okay, get out of the picture. Here is that potent day Monday engulfing what took place Thursday. A lot weaker than the overall market. Also a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. So to me, this was more of a something to look at. If you wanted to short, don't short the strongest thing, short something that looks like it's rolling over. And then boom, boom, into the 50 day. So if you wanted to, if you were short here, today was a day, even though we closed in the red, I would say cover, perhaps, you know, into the 50 day um, and, and then be a little bit flexible. But if you want to ride it out, you could ride it out. You look at this trend here, you know, it's coming into an important little area right there. So I would say a good spot to cover. Maybe tomorrow we find some kind of red dog reversal, reverse the low here for a trade. But now I'm a lot more tactical versus portfolio. I'm going to take trades and let the market tell me what's going on. XHB, the home builders, you know, look at that. Remember we talk about upper level trends. Here is that first upper level trend that broke to the downside. Good spot to stop yourself out. Then if you did so, you know, you probably felt good. And then, you know, into this area, maybe you said, okay, you know what? It's regrouping. It didn't break the trend line. It didn't go to the 200th day. Let's get back involved. And then you got back involved here, made new highs. And now what happened? Another broken trend line. And where are we now? We're holding this more gradual trend line. So this will be something 
uh, I would say, interesting to see what happens here. Look at this trend line. You know, do we break below it or do we hold it like we've been holding it ever since August? So something to watch. You know, maybe it, it holds it a little bit, but then if it can't get back above the 50-day and it goes sideways, perhaps we go lower. At this point, nobody knows. Everyone's going to try and be a, a smart guy. Everyone's going to try and make all these headlines and make all these predictions. For me, my prediction for you is today was a day to be flexible. Today was a day that if you were riding 10, 12, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 50, no, <laughs> a multiple positions, you, you, you took some down. You're allowed to take some profits. You can't take the money away from you in the bank unless they go to jail because they're robbing you. So you know, the, the bears are going to say, oh, the bulls are going to have theirs. You know what? You're not going to have yours if you took trades along the way and you trimmed and trailed and you, know, you didn't fall asleep behind the wheel because a lot of people were starting to. Um, I was actually having some fun with Bob you know, you know, on the IM today. I'm like, ah, oh. I'm like, if today was a short term market top, I'm like, that little uh, segment on the media saying we go higher and higher and higher. He wasn't too happy about that. I was like, I'm only kidding, Bob. <laughs> anyway, um, so with this said, again, prudency, flexibility. No need to be a hero yet. We'll see how things transpire. Um, you know, we talked about how Netflix and LinkedIn started to get a little wishy-washy up there in the price point sheet. Talked about LinkedIn breaking 171 could be a short. I know I tried shorting a lot yesterday and didn't make out. And then you look today, look, this is why you have upper level stops. Because, you know, if you want to protect your gains, this was a good spot to stop yourself out at. Look at the move that it's had. It could easily come into the 50 day. So hopefully you either stop yourself out here or you got short. Some guys did pretty well there short. This right here shouldn't have happened. This was like your wake-up call. When it tried to break out, failed. Then made a lower high right here, boom. Okay, lots of signs all the time here. Netflix too. Remember last Wednesday? Wow, this feels like it was a decade ago. Last Wednesday tried breaking out, couldn't. Then broke this upper flag area and then pow. A lot of guys were trading it versus this area here which was like uh, 176 or even yesterday's low with the 50 day and it broke through. But now it's, you know, came a little bit off the lows, so at least we have another point of reference right here. But there are some signals. Breakout failure, breakout failure, no momentum, so momentum leaves. Apple, you know, it's been stabilizing down here for two days. I don't really know what to make of it except for um, I haven't traded it in two days and I'm very happy, I've had a lot less stress. So, but with that said, you have, what, 426 right here and then there's 419. You have a minor pivot right there, so see what happens. You know, both, you know, both days everyone's like, oh, look at the relative strength in Apple, look at the relative strength in Apple. To me, after a move from 435 to 470, I just think it was burning it off. So we'll see what happens there. You know, still no monumental news out of Apple, no dividend, no buyback, no iWatch, no this, no that, just, you know, iPhone potentially event over the summer. We'll see. Overall, stock has a lot to prove still. Okay, big time downtrend. If there was going to be commitment, it would never have broken the 50-day up here this time. So that's why we left that trade after two nice call spreads and riding it for about 25 points in the common. Haven't touched it, or maybe I touched it for a second the last two days, but that's it. Um, Google, you know, you don't like to see this type of move where you get a nice two-day move, but at least if you knew your levels, you know that it bounced at the 50-day and it's been having trouble at this area. Okay, so why would it on the third day break through an area that was having trouble? This uh, 819, 820 area. So now see if we can hang out in here and we'll figure it out from there. Um, I'm not going to get into a lot of other things because I'm going to do it in the morning call tomorrow. And I'm sure everyone's tired. I just want to say that, you know, again, you're going to read headlines, whether they say this was because of North Korea or it was because of the economic data. It could be because we've just come a long way and, and we have to put some kind of headlines out there and, and attach it to something. Um, the market was due for a correction. Now, the, now is when the big boys come out to play. Now is when you know, individuals that embrace volatility, read the price action, see what's showing relative strength, make some money short, make some money long, look around. Now is when it's a different type of tape. Not just trending, hold your positions, add some, take some off, do some different ones. Now is when volatility picks up. Seasoned traders that come into each day prepared with a plan will be able to make cash flow from the back and forth trading versus levels. And then at some point, maybe we get to a level that's sustainable. And if you sold strength and you got out at the 8th day and the 21 day, perhaps you'll be able to buy at the 100 day or 200 day, save yourself a middle and, and be a little more comfortable and not being in, involved in the volatility or holding your nose underneath the, the water while, you know, some other traders are embracing it. So with that said, hopefully you're in a good position. You know, you, you might get the phone call from your parents. How'd you do it today? The market was, are you okay? You know, not that they talk like that. My mom talks like that sometimes. 
you know, I'm like, <laughs> I love her, mom. Anyway, uh, you know, hopefully you did okay. Hopefully you didn't get, you know, too much, you know, you know have too much on where you didn't get stopped out. And I would say if you've been watching this uh, show, you, you're probably relatively flexible right now and you'll, you'll, you'll be able to handle anything the market shows at you. And that's where I want to have you be. I want you to be prepared for whatever the market throws your way. Have your plan. Wait for the market to, uh, to confirm it and then move on. Scott Riley, T3 Live. See you at the morning call. Have a good night. I'm Mark Sperling, Director of Trading with T3 Trading Group and contributor to T3 Live. Do you trade on your own, but you wish you enjoyed the benefits of a large trading floor? With the T3 Live virtual trading floor, we deliver that experience to you on your computer. On the VTF, you can follow the long and short positions of experienced professional traders like myself, Scott Redler, and others, and listen to our live radio stations as we navigate the markets. In addition, you get the added value of a large community of sophisticated and like-minded traders. Your membership to the virtual trading floor also includes access to our two very popular newsletter products, Off the Charts and the Price Point Sheet at no additional cost. In my opinion, joining the room will be the best trading decision you will ever make. I would like to invite you to begin your membership with a seven-day free trial. To get started, visit t3live.com and click on the Virtual Trading Floor tab. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in the VTF. I'm Evan Lazarus, Chief Knowledge Officer for T3Live.